If you're in the market for new speakers for your vehicle, you may want to stick around for this video. Whether completely building a system with new speakers, amps and subs, or just a simple speaker upgrade, we'll be going over how to pick out a good set of speakers while making sure you get everything you want out of them. So stay with us. This is the second video in our series called how to pick out a car stereo system. This, of course, is the speaker episode. If you missed the head unit episode and you're replacing your head unit, make sure to go back and watch that one too. So a lot of people ask, what should you pick out first? The speakers or the amps? And we at Breakers say, pick out the speakers first, then match the amplifier to those speakers. Now you wanna make sure you pick out speakers you'll like the most and mold around that. So in this video, we'll go over what to look for in a good set of speakers, what a lot of the specs mean, and what characteristics you should be looking for based on how you like to listen to your music. Now, picking out speakers online can be problematic. I mean, how can you possibly know if you like or don't like speakers if you can't hear them? I mean, sure, you can read reviews, but sound is so subjective, and what sounds great to someone may not sound good to you. Well, we at Breakers have provided a solution to this problem. We made a couple of videos that compare side by side some speakers using a high quality microphone that is wide in frequency range. And when watching that video and listening to it with a good set of headphones, you can experience what speakers actually sound like. Now currently we have demonstrated only a handful of speakers and with hundreds if not thousands of speakers out there, it would be tough to demo all of them. So until we're able to comprise a large library of videos showcasing more speakers, as an alternative, we're putting out this video to help you navigate this very tricky subject. So without further ado, here are the five top things you should consider when buying speakers for your vehicle. Number one, RMS power handling. Number two, frequency range. Number three, woofer material. Number four, Twitter material. And number five, sensitivity. Okay, so let's define these and we'll show you how to put this together. So don't go anywhere, even if you know what these things mean, stay tuned because hey, at least it's a good reminder, okay? So starting with number one, RMS power handling. Now RMS by definition is root means square. But in essence, it means the amount of measured power without clipping or distorting at a continuous rate. So when matching speakers with your apps, look at this number and ignore the peak power. Okay, number two, frequency range. Now every speaker set will give a range of frequency it can reproduce. We'll take a look at the Alpine Type R as the example. As a side note, these are a set of speakers we showcase in a video called Good, Better, Best 6.5 inch speakers. And we'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that video out. Okay, so these speakers list their frequency range from 65 hertz all the way up to 40,000 hertz. So real quick, if you look at the frequency spectrum, the low number that's on the left represents the bass or lows, and the higher number on the right represents the trebles or highs. And your middle frequencies around 1000 hertz are your mids. These Alpine speakers will reproduce frequencies as low as 65 hertz and as high as 40,000 hertz. Now, if you're looking for lots of mid bass, then these don't play as low as some of the other speakers on the market. Although you might be saying, hey, 65 is pretty low, especially for mid bass. Now keep in mind that number doesn't indicate how well they will produce that 65 hertz frequency, which can really only be determined two ways by using a spectrum analyzer or actually listening to the speakers. And when we demoed these speakers in that video, they were on the thin side as far as bass is concerned. But as a side note, if you're running subs, one can argue that you might cross over at 100 hertz anyway and the sub will fill those lower frequencies. True, and in some cases, that will work perfectly fine. 
But if you're not running a sub or want to run a well-rounded system and actually get mid-bass from your mid-bass speakers, this is an absolute must. So if you're looking for good mid-bass, look at speakers that are able to play lower frequencies. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, 40K is extremely high and the human ear can only hear frequencies no higher than 20,000 Hertz. But if these speakers can play as high as 40K, then they can definitely play 20K fairly well. And if you watch the video I'm referring to, you can see that these Alpine speakers shine when it comes to the tweeters. Okay, number three, woofer material. Just like subs, the stiffer the cone, the more bass it will produce. The lighter the cone, the more accurate it will be. So if mid bass is what you want, then look for stiff cones made with woven materials like carbon fiber or fiberglass, which is strong, but light. Now cones made of plastic like polypropylene are light, but not stiff. So the mid range is good, but not necessarily the mid bass. Okay, number four, tweeter material. So this is pretty simple. There are two main types of tweeters, hard dome or soft dome. Now hard dome are normally made of metals like aluminum or titanium, which produce loud, bright frequencies. And soft dome are made of materials like synthetic plastic, such as polypropylene, or are made of textiles like silk or tetron, which is polyester and rayon. Now these will produce sounds that are not as bright as hard dome, but are smooth sounding because of the soft roll off at higher frequencies versus the sharper hard dome tweeters. Okay, number five, sensitivity. So this refers to what decibels the speakers will play at one watt, one meter. So using the Alpine as the example again, these produce 88 dB at one watt, one meter. Now here's how this translates. The higher the sensitivity, the more efficient the speaker is which is okay if you're running off the power of the radio or if you're running an amplifier with limited power. But to get higher sensitivity, you must reduce the weight mass of the motor section in the mid-range, which means the voice coil and the cone, but a light cone results in less bass and a voice coil that has less mass can handle as much power. So speakers that have high sensitivity don't have as much bass and speakers with lower sensitivity tend to produce more bass. So in this case, lower is better. Okay, so let's put this all together because these five things by themselves do not indicate great speakers. They only give you clues as what the speaker is capable of doing. You must combine these five things together along with your objective and this is where the magic happens. Okay, let's do this thing. Say you really wanted to get really good mid bass. Here is what you want to look at. Good mid bass equals high RMS, low frequency reproduction in the frequency range, a stiff cone, a large magnet, and low sensitivity. Okay, let's say you wanted really good mid range. So low to mid RMS, decent bass reproduction in the frequency range, a light cone and a smaller magnet and higher sensitivity. Okay, let's move on the tweeters. Let's say you wanted nice, bright tweeters. You wanna go with hard dome tweeters that are made with metal like aluminum or titanium. Now, if you wanted smoother highs, you want a soft dome tweeter made of synthetic plastics or fabrics like silk or polyester. Now, whether you want bright or smooth highs, pay attention to the higher frequency on the range. Okay, so let's take what we know and let's apply it to some real world speakers. We'll talk about the two remaining speakers in the video we've been talking about. So make sure you check that out so you can see and hear the difference in the characteristics. Okay, the Memphis PRX6C. Now these speakers have great mid range, but the mid bass is not as good. Because of the low RMS, they only handle 50 watts. The lightweight polypropylene cone is not so rigid and the lowest frequency response is only 72 Hertz. Now these have a nice smooth tweeter because of the non-metal dome tweeter, which is polypropylene. So the conclusion on these speakers is not as good on the mid bass as the mid range and nice smooth bright highs, but not as tinny 
as your hard dome tweeters. Okay, next, the Blam Signatures 165. Now these are only 60 watts RMS, but still have really good mid bass because of the stiff carbon fiber cone and the lowest frequency reproduction is 60 Hertz. Now the RMS is only 60 and the sensitivity is really high at 94.3, but that's mainly because these are two ohm speakers versus most speakers, which are four ohm. So naturally these are going to be more efficient because of that. But the mid bass is really good. And if you watch the video, you'll notice that these produce the most bass out of the three that we tested. The tweeter is smooth and accurate because of the soft dome silk tweeter. Okay, so the conclusion on these speakers is great mid bass, good mid range, and a nice, accurate, smooth tweeter. So that covers the speakers mentioned in the video, but here are some examples of some other speakers with different characteristics that further support the data in this video. Okay, let's take a look at Kenwood's XR1701P. These are 100 watts RMS. Frequency response as low as 43 Hertz. And a rigid fiberglass woven cone, a good size magnet, and a low sensitivity at 87 dB. Making these a really good choice if you want good mid bass, and if you're looking for bright highs, these have a titanium hard dome tweeter capable of reproducing frequencies as high as 40K. Now the conclusion on these speakers, great mid bass and bright highs. And the last set we'll look at is the Kicker QSS67. These are 100 watts RMS. These speakers are capable of playing frequencies as low as 40 hertz, have a big magnet, tri-tech fiber glass woven cone, so they're really stiff, and the sensitivity is 87 dB. These speakers play really low frequencies. Make sure you're properly sound editing your door. We've used these speakers without a woofer and the bass response was phenomenal. The highs are also nice and smooth with a great frequency roll off that's pleasing to the ears because of the soft dome tweeter. Now conclusion, these have great mid bass and very smooth highs. As you can see, if you know what you want and follow this formula, you'll have a good idea on how speakers will perform even without listening to them. Now armed with this knowledge, you are now an expert. So get out there and start shopping for your in-tier speakers. Make sure to check out our website for all your car stereo needs. Remember, we do have financing available. Breaker Stereo is the king of credit, good credit, bad credit, no credit. All credit is good credit at Breaker Stereo. Simply find something that you like online, add to cart, apply, get approved, and we'll send your gear out to you ASAP. Okay, we hope this video has been helpful and useful for you. If it was, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Again, my name is Josh, I'm with Breaker Stereo. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.